Hundreds of years ago, people used guns like this. But you couldn't buy bullets made in a factory. People had to make their own. Like this. And that. How did they do it? In stories of long ago, they talk about having a pistol at your belt. Not in your belt, but at your belt, like this. See, it's not stuck through. How do they do it? Well, the equivalent of the holster in those days was, in fact, a belt hook, like that. A piece of steel that ran down beside the pistol, and that could be simply slipped over the belt, and the pistol sat at the belt, like that. But, of course, if you had a pistol several hundreds of years ago, you had to make your own ammunition. And it ended up as these little leaden balls, which were the actual bullet, and black gunpowder. You might have been able to buy the black gunpowder, but you had to make your own bullets. And to do that, people used these things, bullet moulds, which came looking like a pair of tongs with a lump at the end with little holes in it. What they had to do was to melt lead, and they, of course, used an open fire, a wood fire, and probably a crucible and bits of lead that they got from somewhere. But with 20th, te 20th century technology, we can do a bit better than that and melt the lead like this. and the lead was poured into that hole there. And into this one. And if you keep watching that, you'll see when it goes from shiny to unshiny, the metal solidified. And then they had to wait for it to cool, and they could open the tong-like apparatus that was the bullet mould, and the bullet would fall out like this. That's cool now, so I can prise that out and take off the bits of lead that were no good at all. The trouble is, you see, it was left with that strange bit of apparatus there. It wouldn't have fitted down a gun barrel. So what they had to do is to take this part of the bullet mould, which is like a pair of scissors, and use it to guillotine that neck off the bullet, like this. The neck was put into the scissor-like part, the tongs were squeezed shut and it scissored off that extra bit of lead that was then melted down and used for the next bullet. A laborious process, but effective, and that was the bullet which just needed a bit of trimming with a file or something similar. And it was added to the pile. Meanwhile, in this type of bullet mould, it was a bit more sophisticated because the guillotining was done with this bit of apparatus here. A hammer knocked it to one side and the waste came off with it. And when it was opened, the bullet was almost immediately ready for use. Just had those little bits to be taken off with a pair of scissors or a file, something like that. And so you ended up with your store of black powder and your store of lead bullets. And what was done was that the black powder was poured down first and rammed into place and a wad was put in. Then a bullet was put in, rammed into place and a wad put in. It took a long time. Then this steel was pushed forward, black powder of a finer kind was put into the pan there, and that went through into a touch hole that ran into the main chamber. The thing could then be cocked, the steel pushed down to hold the powder in place and stop the rain getting in. When you wanted to fire it, you pulled the trigger, and this was a bit of flint, hence the name flintlock. It hit the steel, pushed it out of the way, and produced sparks that rained down into the pan and set fire to the gunpowder. Very laborious. And if you were lucky, it lit the powder in the pan, it burnt through the touch hole, and fired the main chamber. If you were unlucky, it just fired the powder in the pan. And you got a flash in the pan, which means you had the promise of something big, but it never really came to pass. That's how we got the saying.